Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Michael Bogger Show. Of course, it's me, Michael Bogger. I hope you guys are doing great. Um, I wanted to say I'm sorry for the uh, absence I took over the past couple of weeks. Um, I actually get bit by a pretty bad spider, and that's been healing. Um, that, along with uh, finishing getting rid of these parasites I had, um, took kind of a toll. That and me and my family decided to take a vacation and do some redecorating. As you can see, let me give you a little tour of my office here. Um, that's my wall of accomplishments right there. Um, as you can see, my Dave & Buster's Magical Mike Cup, which everybody I work with um, kind of had a hand on that. Uh, mainly one person did it, though, and I appreciate that because I used to do magic for everybody. Um, a newspaper article that I was mentioned in for basically the effects of how ending a conversation with someone can really help them out. Um, my business license for a business that I was starting, um, that'll actually become at a later date uh, as to what happened to that. And then last but not least is my uh, my dog training certificate, which was really cool to get um, because not only was, the, um, was my dog trained, but I was too. All right, now let me set this back down to how it's supposed to be. All right. But um, back to today's topic, um, my discussion today is really more of one of safety and how I'm afraid um, there's going to be a lot of violence on Tuesday, Election Day, and possibly thereafter. Um, I know in my area alone a story came out that the FBI is going to be taking a very hard look at the entire area I live in, not just the city. Um, if you don't know anything about where I live um, in Virginia, they group a lot of our cities together just to call them Hampton Roads. And, uh, excuse me, my eye itches. And um, so basically all the FBI put in the paper was that they are watching Hampton Roads very cautiously. And the area I live in uh, is a very, I want to say heavily Trump area. Um, now I'm not dis, I'm not dissing any candidate. That's not the purpose of this video whatsoever. My purpose is not to tell you who to vote for, who not to vote for. My warning is to be careful of who you vote for, be careful of who you tell, and just be careful of the people around you. Um, I've even heard rumors that there might be some possible terrorist attacks um, that might happen on Election Day, especially in my area, was singled out as well. We are a high military community around here, um, so that's also frightening. And I just want to say for anybody else who's in the same situation as basically me and my family are, I mean, there's a couple rules that I've already told them that I, we're going to follow, and maybe you might take some of them as well. My first rule is we do not tell anybody who we're voting for, and that includes on YouTube. I'm not going to tell you who I'm going to vote for. I'm not going to tell you who my family's going to vote for. Um, it could be Trump. It could be Clinton. It could be a third party. That's just going to be between me and my ballot. Um, and when I stand in line, it's going to be the same way. We do have a lot of open carry people around here, and there have been stories also where there's supposed to be a heightened police presence because of all the open carriers out here and all the intimidation that's been going on out here from, I want to say mainly the Trump side as far as my area goes, but I also have heard that on the Clinton side, the further north you go in my state. Um, so it's on both sides. There's not just one side to blame. But my biggest pet peeve is we do not tell anyone who we're voting for. Do not even talk about politics. We are there to vote. Um, we can talk about any other subject, lighthearted. I'll inv I invite anyone else that wants to, wants to join in on the conversation. That's fine. But just politics completely out of it. Um, another rule I'm having is try not to take any pamphlets from any of the uh, people handing out information because one year I found out that I actually knew someone was handing out information and she was on the Democratic, she was for the Democratic Party. And my purpose of talking to her was not just, you know, to get her pamphlet, but she was once a teacher of mine, so I was interested in how she was doing. And the Republican um, representative there came up to me and literally threw a packet of paper at my face because he thought I was automatically a Democrat, what's the point, but he still wanted to get his point across, which was very rude. Um, I'm not going to tell you who I voted for in that election either, but 
it doesn't help your case being rude like that and he didn't even know why I was talking to the teacher and it wasn't even about politics it was asking how the school year was going and things like that um, so my general thumb is don't take any pamphlets from anybody and if you do decide you want to take a pamphlet from someone take it from everybody don't let anybody know who you're voting for um, the less likely it, less likely you are to be intimidated or bribed or anything like that um, which brings me to rule number two. If anybody tries to threaten you, intimidate you, bribe you, no matter, just do something illegal, something that makes you feel uncomfortable, say something to somebody. Say something to an, uh, one of the officials. Say something. Call the police even. Because what they're doing is highly illegal and they bank that most people will not, I repeat, will not say anything. Especially these um, poll watchers that Donald Trump's campaign has called for. Um, they're pretty scary, especially around here, because everyone I know that wants to do that is very intimidating without weapons and without things like that. So they can be even more intimidating on that day. Um, which brings me to another point as well. Everyone getting so so hyped up about the election doesn't even really know how the election process works um, yes nine times out of ten the pop person with the popular vote wins but that's not always necessary technically you're voting for a delegate you're not voting for your the campaign you're voting for a delegate and the delegate the per the area with the highest like the states with the highest um, what's the word I'm thinking of, vote count, um, the areas, the delegate that they think is going to vote for their side wins. There is no law stating that that delegate has to vote the way the state votes. So if a Hillary Clinton delegate wins, they are more than welcome to vote for Trump and the Electoral College and vice versa, or a third party. Um, and it's a very messed up system. Uh, it's been that way for a while. For example, George Bush the second. He was the first president in over, if I'm, memory serves me correctly, a hundred years that did not win by popular vote, and that's because of the Electoral College. Um, and that also brings to another frightening aspect uh, that most people never really had to worry about till now. Um, basically, if no candidate gets 270 electoral votes, that vote then goes to Congress. And Congress is messed up as it is but Congress will be deciding our next president, and that is scary. It's no longer you, it's no longer me, it's no longer the delegate we selected to vote for our candidate. It is now the people in a broken Congress going to vote for a broken president. Um, I'm not going to say who I'm for or who I'm against, because honestly, I'm an independent. I do not know where my vote's going. Even up till now, I don't know where my vote's going. I have I have done a lot of research and I think all parties all sides have a lot of flaws for me to think about but I will I will vote since it's my American right and people died for the ability for me to vote um, it's just it's really tough not to but basically we're voting for the shiniest of two turds and it should not be that way we should be voting for the best of the best um, the people that are gonna try and make this country work because we become so polarized that we think the person who is gonna go completely left or completely right is gonna fix the country and that's just not true even our founding fathers knew that there are gonna be opposite sides to everything and our best bet is to work together to find a compromise Increasing taxes for the rich and doing nothing else is not going to fix our economy. But cutting taxes for the rich and cutting social programs is also not going to fix the economy. There has to be middle ground, and that's what this world has forgotten. There is no right answer to one side. There is no wrong answer to the other. The right answer is always in the middle. The right answer will always be in the middle. As soon as you go too far left or too far right, the answer is automatically wrong because you're going to leave somebody out. You're going to disenfranchise some population, and that population is going to grow. And then all of a sudden we have Trump and Hillary um, presidencies again, and that's just not right. So basically, this video is just to, t just to urge you, your God-given right is to vote. 
If you're in America, your right is to vote absentee in person. Wait that three hours if you have to. I know in my area the lines were about three hours long last election. Uh, wait. It is your it is your duty as an American to vote. People die every day in our armed services to give you that chance to voice your opinion and vote. Um, granted, the system is broken, like I said, and hopefully one day we will be able to fix it. I think this election is going to do a lot to fix the problems in our electoral system. I eventually think that we are going to be able to do popular vote instead of electoral college and the pers person with the popular vote automatically wins. Not this 270 BS, not this, um, you know, popular vote uh, says one candidate but the electoral colleges went to another. None of that. The middleman needs to be cut because the people know what they want. Uh, the world may laugh at Americans and yes some of the things that Americans say are laughable but the problem is not the people the problem is the way we are taught the way we are oppressed on both sides we need to come together we need to create a coalition we need to nonviolently protest the way these things are done tell the people like Donald Trump Hillary Clinton Paul Ryan Ted Cruz Mark Rubio um, heck, even Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders should have won if it wasn't for a scandal with the Clinton campaign. I was a huge Bernie supporter. Um, so people like Bernie Sanders get involved. Uh, Occupy Wall Street. I mean, we can all work together from high to low to fix this system. The point is we need to find a way to unify to fix this system. But that's not what this uh, video was about. This video is basically about get out and vote. Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green Party, Libertarian. Um, I don't know what this, the person who was with the CIA, I don't know what he, call, he calls his party. I know there's a weed party. Um, you want to, I don't suggest voting for Mickey Mouse, but if you're that upset with the establishment, at least you went out there and you showed someone that you were that upset with the establishment. Not voting means you vote for the the wrong person, basically, because the wrong person will win without your vote. Who the wrong person is, I don't know. And my opinion is not going to solidify who's the wrong person and who's the right person. Everybody does wrong in this life. It's just who can control it, who can admit to it, who can apologize. Um, but just be careful, please. I don't want to see any any news reports of violence in the poll lines. I don't want to see anybody hurting anybody. I don't want to see any shootings. We should all be able to come together and talk about our differences. We should be all be able to reach a middle ground. I mean, who knows? Maybe Trump is right that the establishment is messed up and we need to vote for him. And maybe he will fix the, um, the establishment. Maybe since he is an outsider, he will be able to do some things. Then again, maybe because he's been able to cheat the system so much he might cheat the system again the same thing with Hillary Clinton uh, she has lied uh, she's definitely covered things up and she is part of the establishment so more than likely she's not going to change the establishment but her temperament seems to be a lot better um, there's faults on both sides there's faults on every side of every party and all I ask is that please be safe do not talk about politics in line do not let anyone intimidate you call someone right away like I said the FBI and federal prosecutors in my area are standing by and they even have a telephone number for you to call if intimidation or bribery has occurred against you while you're voting um, and I also ask that no matter what, except the election results, um, we all know what the popular vote's going to be. I mean, we don't know who it's going to go for, but one thing we say for sure is the popular vote will be counted. Now, the electoral vote is a different story, but whoever has the popular vote should win. If that's not the case, then yes, stand up. Fight back. If Donald Trump gets the popular vote, then yes, he should be the president no matter what the Electoral College says. Same thing with Hillary Clinton, same thing with Jill Stein, same thing with the Libertarian candidate, same thing with the CIA person. Um, but until all that happens, we just need to learn to get along, be peaceful at the polls, love one another. 
um, accept differences. The only way we succeed, the only way we grow when we succeed is when two people, two different ideas come together and realize that parts of both make one amazing idea. And that's what I want to see this year. That's what I want to see on Tuesday and beyond. So please, get out there and vote. Please be safe about doing it. And just remember, I love you guys. Be nice to each other.